Hello, I'm Alex Robson, and uh, as you might expect by this point, I'm the third innovation fellow working on the Gizmo project. Uh, it's my role to act as a point of contact to liaise with companies, uh, with academics, our wider project team, uh, to help diagnose problems and challenges, to identify where we can support businesses, uh, where we can apply our research, where we can form collaborations, and also to develop and deliver projects, whether that's in the lab myself or by supporting others. And my specific role is uh, on the surface and coatings theme, and that aligns closely with my background in materials analysis, uh, in surface science and coating development. I've been involved with surface analysis techniques, uh, predominantly scanning probe microscopy, but also a range of others for approximately uh, 12 years now. Um, across a wide range of material systems from biological materials through semiconductor devices uh, through to thin films uh, and I've also been involved with the development of coatings using uh, various different techniques. Currently a lot of my research work involves developing coatings using plasma polymerization. The surface and coatings theme itself is uh, interdisciplinary. Uh, there are members of Lancaster University's physics, chemistry and engineering departments within the theme, and it ties in very neatly with the Materials Science Institute, um, which is active in interdisciplinary research, development and education around new material science. So as to surface and coatings, uh, themselves well with, with surfaces as I expect everyone here is aware we're talking about the outermost layer or region of a of material a product or a device where it's interacting with its surroundings and its uh, environment um, the actual properties and behavior of a surface uh, of a thin film or a layer can be very different to those of the bulk of the material uh, or a product or a device and they can greatly affect the materials behavior uh, and you can also exploit those properties to provide some form of functionality to a material. Correspondingly, surface analysis techniques can provide a great deal of information about a sample or a product, uh, as surface interfaces are critically important in how a material is interacting with surroundings or other materials. Um, information about a surface's structure or chemistry can be key for things such as quality control, for problem solving, uh, for product or process development. Uh, examples could be things like verifying the structure of a device or a product, uh, such as maybe a, a semiconductor LED or a laser or something like that. Um, identifying contaminants uh, or impurities on a sample, um, determining the composition of something like a thin film, characterizing surface material and device properties, uh, and also identifying differences uh, between different materials from different suppliers and so on. So things similar to this. The other part of our theme focuses on coatings. Uh, so surface coating in general is an effective proven industrial route to add substantial value to existing materials and products. Um, and it's getting increasingly rare these days to find a product where there hasn't been some kind of thought as to how it's going to interact with its environment whether it needs some kind of surface modification or coating to help it achieve its intended purpose. And surface coatings uh, can enhance multiple material properties. You might be looking at enhancing performance or reliability, versatility. So maybe if you want to use something in a, in a different context to its original um, form uh, or, or things like also in, enhancing endurance. Uh, these properties can also include things uh, such as maybe enhancing the hydrophobicity uh, of a material or uh, looking at anti-fouling behaviour, uh, antimicrobial or antiviral behaviour, which is obviously a, a very pressing issue at the moment. Uh, but it could also be things like exploiting uh, optical properties of materials, looking at enhancing or giving different thermal and electrical behaviour. Uh, changing adhesive properties for things like biocompatibility and so on. And functional coatings in general are applied to a wide diverse range of products and markets from things from contact lenses through to drinks cartons. Uh, they're found in automotive products, textiles, 
polymer films, construction materials, uh, products or processes that might be affected by biofilms, so like bacteria buildup. Uh, so that might be things like pipes and medical implants. So given all of this, uh, so how can we help on Gizmo? What kind of problems can we solve within um, the surface and coating scheme? Well, we can do things like um, helping to develop and optimize new functional coatings, functionalized surfaces for products and materials. Uh, we could undertake proof of concept studies, uh, prototyping, uh, maybe demonstrating feasibility of ideas, trialing processes that might help you inform decisions as to whether you want to go in for large scale production down the line. Uh, we can help analyze and characterize materials and surfaces. Uh, we could help identify contaminants. We can look at aiding with identification of issues and processes and helping you uh, to come towards solutions for those things. And I would like to think that we could help understand the latest thinking in these areas as well. And one thing I do want to highlight as well is similar to our other themes, we have a number of graduate researchers who are going to be working on uh, research projects within the Gizmo framework as well. And we hope that businesses will engage with these. Uh, broadly, these are the development of surfaces in the fight against antimicrobial resistance, uh, development of plasma based coating techniques for atomically precise materials for molecular materials, and development of scalable methods for the functionalization of 2D materials. Uh, so that would be materials similar to graphene, for example, um, for quantum security and green energy applications. So if there's anything in there that's of interest to businesses, please do get in touch uh, and we'd be delighted to see how we could work together around this. If it sounds like a confusing medley of words, um, we'd be very happy to run thing through things in, in much more detail and discuss how any of that could be uh, could relate to your business uh, at another point. So to give you an idea of some of the projects examples that we've worked on in the past, I have a couple of quick case studies here. I'm afraid I can't give you full details just because of the um, agreements that we have in place, but these should give you an idea of the kind of work we could potentially do. And the first of these involved the development of a patterned hydrophobic coating for a product for a scientific equipment company here they wanted to improve uh, one of their products to help guide sample preparation for a particular system uh, and, a, and a particular process and this project involved us working across our physics and chemistry departments uh, to identify suitable coating and patterning methods uh, the practicalities of doing that um, a review of existing literature to guide and identify suitable chemistry to use um, surface analysis of materials and products, development of protocols uh, to optimize co the coating process and testing of the, the prototype um, coatings themselves at the company's headquarters. So on the surface analysis side of things, uh, we performed some microscopy, uh, some compositional analysis, compositional mapping, uh, some contact angle measurements basically to establish how hydrophobic the materials were and we also looked at some competitors products that we've been provided uh, which allowed us to establish a benchmark of what we'd uh, ideally like and gave us a point of reference for making our own prototype coatings essentially allowing us to know what we needed to aim for and that led us to being able to produce some initial prototype coatings using one of our plasma polymerization reactors which you can see here uh, essentially the product is immersed within the plasma and the exposed surfaces are coated and that's the glowing tube region uh, on the picture there and using plasma processes and masking techniques uh, we could produce a prototype for the company which we then tested in our own labs uh, in the same way as before so looking at composition uh, looking at hydrophobicity that kind of thing and then we passed a prototype or a series of prototypes rather to the company uh, for testing in their in-house uh, lab using real world methods so essentially what would be done by consumers down the line and we're currently undertaking a second round of optimization uh, to tweak the processes so the company can hopefully look towards uh, scale up and ultimately market these materials uh, later on 
The second case study is a materials analysis one. Uh, this involved a manufacturer making a range of coatings. Uh, this was a situation uh, where we actually had a much broader discussion with the company about uh, problems they had, how we could help. Uh, and also uh, one of the issues that they came up with was that they had suspicions that a particular coating wasn't working perfectly uh, due to a reaction uh, between the substrate that they had and the coating itself. Um, but they didn't actually have conclusive proof of this. They didn't have a, a, an observation of that. And they provided us with a number of coated samples, so different substrates, different coatings. And the particular uh, example here that I have is a coating on glass. And our approach was to lean on the expertise that we have in our physics department around microscopy and cross-sectional analysis. And in this case, we used scanning probe methods uh, to analyze the surface uh, topography. It's electrical and thermal behavior both on the actual surface of the sample to see if we could see any effects coming through the coating from below uh, but also in cross section which we produced by milling the sample with an argon ion beam uh, you, you can kind of think of this a bit like atomic sandblasting essentially you expose part of a material to the ion beam it mills it away and you end up with a smooth surface which you can then put into a microscope or a different piece of analytical equipment and look at the internal structure and again, we used scanning probe techniques here, uh, looked at the topography of that cross section, looked at its electrical and thermal behavior. And the striking feature that we observed straight away was there were a number of holes, or I guess almost pockets, uh, aligned along the boundary between the substrate and the, and the coating itself, which are highlighted on the picture with red circles. And the identification of those defects, uh, those holes very neatly fitted in with the company's suspicions, basically allowed them to confirm that they did have an issue uh, and then look to uh, modifying their processes to try and engineer that issue out. So hopefully that gives you some idea as to how we can help businesses uh, in the surface and coating sphere and the case studies would hopefully give you an idea on how we might approach a particular problem or issue uh, and now I'm going to hand back over to James again. Thank you.